So many people struggle with sleep and they just don't know what to do to get better sleep. And that's exactly why in this video I'm going to share 12 tips on how to go ahead and improve your sleep and a lot of these things you probably don't know about so I'm excited to share them with you in today's video. So over the past month, I've been putting a lot of research into sleep just because as you know, you sleep one third of your life. One third of your whole life, that's like 20 years or something, goes towards sleep. So you might as well optimize it and make it the best it can possibly be. And that's exactly why I put so much research into it. I'm just gonna give you guys the top 12 tips that you guys can apply right away. Big disclaimer, a lot of the tips will come from Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep book. To prevent you guys having to go through the whole book, I'm just going to give you guys the 12 tips that I've been able to collate and put together. Tip number one, this is probably the most important. Have a set sleep and wake up time. It's so important to create a routine and sort of really dull in your circadian rhythm to have a routine. Like you can't catch up on sleep. It's a floor where you could sort of sleep five, six hours from Monday to Friday and just binge sleep on the weekend and sleep like nine to 10 hours and catch up on sleep. You cannot catch up sleep. Once you've lost sleep, you've lost it and you've lost memory, retention, all these things you've learned, you can't catch up on those. Those are now gone forever. So you have to have a set routine, set up an alarm to go to sleep. That's something that people don't do. I have an alarm that rings at 9, 15 p.m. and it continuously rings until I stop it because I'll continually snooze it and I'll only stop it once I'm in bed. So I have an alarm to tell me to go to sleep. Also, it's super important to have an alarm to wake up. And I highly recommend to have the same routine every single day of the week. Have the same wake up and night routine on weekdays and weekends. And that's why it's pretty bad to sort of go out on late nights on Saturdays and Fridays because it really does tumble into the next day forcing you to sleep in to recover and make up for sleep. And we sleep in on those days, it'll make it hard for you to then wake up early on the Monday. So have a set routine. If you like to go out late, then sleep late every day and wake up late every day and make sure that you could apply that to weekdays. So if your job doesn't allow that, then don't do that on the weekends. Two, exercise is great for sleep. You don't want to exercise two to three hours before sleep. You want to exercise probably more than that uh, because then you'll get your heart rate up and you'll be hard for you to sleep. But exercising at least 30 minutes every single day drastically helps your sleep. So I definitely recommend exercising. Three, avoid any caffeine, especially during the afternoon because a lot of people make the mistake of like drinking a coffee in the afternoon, but it takes eight hours to wear off, sometimes even more. And that nicotine and caffeine is gonna keep you awake. Also about nicotine, you shouldn't smoke cigarettes because nicotine also keeps you awake. Chocolate, tea, anything that contains caffeine, you shouldn't do it more than eight hours before you sleep because that's gonna keep you up. Four, avoid any alcoholic drinks before sleep. A lot of people might say that they want a small you know, cup of wine or something to sort of ease them for them to go ahead and sleep. What alcohol does, it only sort of numbs your body. It's like an anesthetic where it sort of numbs your brain cells that sort of gives you a feeling of you resting and sleeping. It's sort of just like those drugs that they use when surgery, it's like an anesthetic that sort of puts you to sleep. But what you don't know is that it actually robs your REM sleep. When you're sort of in this sort of numb state, you don't actually get REM sleep and REM sleep is important for restoring your sort of muscles, um, restoring your memories, uh, allowing you to dream. All those things are robbed when you go ahead and drink alcohol. So it's not good to drink alcohol before you go to sleep. Five, avoid eating a lot and drinking a lot before you go to sleep. Because if you drink and go to sleep on a full belly, your body's gonna be working to sort of burn and sort of break down those foods. And as a result, it's actually gonna keep you up. So you definitely don't wanna do that. And if you drink a lot of water, that's gonna keep you up at night and break your sleep because then you're gonna to have to go to the bathroom quite a bit to urinate and that's just gonna break your sleep. And obviously you wanna have a full eight hours of unbroken sleep if possible. Six, if possible, avoid taking any drugs, medicines, um, during the post afternoon of your day because stuff like that can keep you awake because there's a lot of side effects, things that you know counter 
allergies, counter insomnia, counter asthma or blood pressure, a lot of these drugs sort of disrupt or delay your sleep. Um, that's sort of one of the side effects and obviously you want to have good sleep so avoid drugs and check out and look for the side effects as well as ask your doctor to see if they could prescribe something that you could take in the morning so by the time you go ahead and nap for the night it wears out and it's out of your system. Seven, this is an important one. Don't take any naps after 3 p.m. because it actually makes it much much harder for you to sleep because it releases this sort of sleep pressure called adenosine which builds up throughout the day and every time you nap or sleep that pressure gets released and it gets knocked back down making it harder for you to sort of rebuild it up for you to sleep at night so after the naps are good and there's a lot of health benefits to them but don't do them after 3 p.m. A. This is an important one that a lot of the top entrepreneurs perform every single day that a lot of people don't You want to actually unwind and relax like an hour before bed. This could be things such as reading books, listening to music, meditating. Definitely you don't want to be looking at your phone or watching a movie uh, because the blue light from that is going to definitely disrupt your sleep. But you want to have an hour just to unwind every single day. And that's something that a lot of people don't do. You just go straight from working to just trying to knock out and you don't have that relaxed time for your body to sort of cool down and take a nap. Definitely taking warm showers can include in that because warm showers actually help your sleep because when you have a warm shower, what your body does, it releases heat from your skin and body and as a result, cools your body temperature down, allowing you to sleep much better. So that's another bonus tip. The bonus tip I actually just mentioned, that's actually tip number nine. Taking a warm, nice bath actually cools you down because it gives off heat from your body and it's actually a very nice relaxer. It's very soothing to have a nice warm shower and it gets you sort of drowsy and sleepy. So that's tip number nine. Tip number 10. This is something that even like I've heard from Ty Lopez. You want your room to be pitch black. Like he has like, it's just dark. You want to have no electronics. You want your clocks off or you can turn them around against the wall. You don't want to have any electronics, reduce the amount of electronics you have in your bedroom. So if you have a TV in your bedroom, probably best not to have one, Um, but you know, keep everything off, turn off PowerPoints, have a nice soft comfy bed, remove any blue light, make sure all your bed lights, they're yellow um, and they're orange and warm color, not that white sort of bluish bright color because that will keep you awake. Um, And yeah, keep your room gadget free, blue light free, block out as much light as possible and that would be the best way to get the highest quality sleep. Another tip is actually you want to keep your room cool. The cooler your room is, the better your sleep is going to be. Just as I've mentioned, the cooler your body temperature is, the better you're going to sleep. So if possible, turn on the aircon, blast it cold, have a nice warm blanket and that's sort of how you get the best sleep possible. Tip number 11. This is a pretty strange one that I've learned from Matthew Walker. What you want to do is during the morning, you actually want to have 30 minutes to 60 minutes of light exposure. And that sort of gets sunlight into your eyes, tells your body to wake up, don't produce any melatonin and sort of get working and sort of start building that pressure of adenosine. And then what you want to do before you sleep is you want to reduce light exposure, dim your lights, turn off lights, close your blinds and sort of start getting darkness into your eyes to signal to your body that now it's time for you to sleep. It's time for you to go ahead and generate melatonin because that's sort of what happens when there's not many lights. So you definitely want to sort of utilize sunlight to really get your sleep rhythm towards daylight and day night. And that would definitely help you sleep at night because a lot of people they don't get sun exposure during the day and that really stuffs up your body's sort of circadian rhythm melatonin release so you definitely want to get sunlight during the day and tone down the lights just before you sleep lastly the 12th tip this is definitely something that everyone can relate to have you ever been in that moment where you're just sort of lying in bed for like 10 to 20 plus minutes and you just can't fall asleep you want to fall asleep because you have a big day tomorrow you're feeling anxious you're saying go to sleep but you're not going to sleep don't force it what you should do get back up do some light relaxing activity read a book get some chores done Um, listen to some music, meditate and do this until you feel tired again because lying in bed and feeling anxious is just going to get worse and worse and you're just going to be lying in bed for like hours. So get out of your bed, do something. When you feel sleepy again, try to sleep again. If you go ahead and can't sleep and you're still awake for another 20 minutes, get out of bed, read another book, go back to reading because you're wide awake. So that's sort of what I do. Like when I can't sleep, I get up and I continue reading. 
after I feel tired, I go to sleep. If I can't fall asleep, wake back up, continue reading. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. Like one, I'm getting work done because I'm reading. Two, I'm actually helping me to fall asleep. And three, I've changed my mind. I'm like, okay, I want to stay awake because it allows me to continue to read. Another trick is you don't want to sort of tell yourself to sleep. Have you noticed that in class, in a lecture or in at work, you're so tired and you're just telling yourself, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, especially when you're driving. But the more you say wake up, the more you fall asleep. And then when you want to fall asleep, you tell yourself, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. The more you tell yourself to go to sleep, you actually get more woken up. So what you want to do is you want to trick yourself and tell yourself, wake up, wake up, wake up while you're in bed, because that'll actually trick your body to go to sleep. And where I learned this trick was one of these famous actors, his tip for crying was that in a scene that where he needed to cry, he would actually tell himself, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Because if you've noticed, every single time you cry, in, especially in front of people, you're trying to hold it in, you're trying to tell yourself, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And that's the exact moment when you do cry. And when you're trying to cry and you tell yourself, cry, 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 no tears come out. So using that trick he did, sort of reverse psychology, I use the exact same thing for sleep and it worked perfectly. Bonus tip 13, this is something that has helped me drastically, breathing. Breathing is so important. There's a routine where I just sort of do deep breaths in and out and I make sure that my breath's going out are longer than my breath's going in. And just doing that again and again and again, I just find myself knocking out and going to sleep without even knowing. That's an amazing tip that I learned in like a Gary V sort of podcast. Um, and he was sort of telling that as something that he found from one of his friends. Um, and now I'm sharing it to you guys, but that's something that I've personally tried and it has crazy wonders and it helped me so much with my sleep. So I definitely recommend you guys to use that tip. But yeah, that's today's video, 13 tips. Um, they're supposed to be only 12, but that's of what I've learned, what I've tested personally, things I've tried, and you guys get it all in this silver platter in today's video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Question of the day, how long does it take for you to get to sleep? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one minute? Let me know. Drop your answers in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy this sort of different style of videos. I'm just sort of documenting all the things I've learned and just sort of giving everything I know, all the value I've accumulated on a silver platter in a 10, 15 minute video for you guys to consume so you guys don't have to go through all the pain and effort that I went through to accrue all this information. And that's sort of the goal of this channel, to provide as much value as possible. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video, that really helps. That's all I ask for and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with more value. Peace.